take a good look at this map of India. The arrow points to the Deccan. North of the Deccan lies a group of Indian states called Rajputana. To the northwest of these states is a large waterless piece of country called the Tar Desert. There are very few signs of life in the desert, but sometimes you can see bullock carts and camels travelling slowly across the sandy waste. They are on their way to a desert town, for here on the edge of the desert lies the town of Bikaneer. This is a map of the town itself, and round it is a wall which protects it from the dust and storms of the desert. This is a view of the walls from the outside. And now we are looking at the walls from the inside of the town. They are wide enough for a man to walk along them. There are gates in these walls, and roads across the desert lead to the gates. Through them, traffic flows in and out of the city. Notice all the different kinds of transport that the people of Bikaneer use. There are camels, of course, because of the desert. But there are motor cars as well, and a great many bicycles and carts drawn by horses. Strolling across the road is a cow, which is the sacred animal of the Hindus, and she may wander where she pleases. Down this street, you can see the Hindu temple. All the people of Bikaneer belong to the Hindu religion, and here you see some of them worshipping in the courts of the temple. Notice particularly the clothes which the people wear. They are made of cotton, and they are designed to protect their wearers against the very hot sun. Near to the temple is a school, and here the children sit on the floor and write on slates. The little boy on the left of the screen seems to have got his sum all wrong. There are no cinemas to go to after school, but there are very funny animal imitators in the streets. And you can stand and watch a snake charmer making a cobra sway to and fro to his music. The children of Bikaneer love watching him, and so do the grown-ups too. All the people in the town need water to drink and to wash in. But if we look at the map again, we shall see that there are no rivers or lakes near Bikaneer, but there are plenty of deep wells, for of course the town would never have been built on this site if there had been no water available. The wells are being pointed out on the map now. Let's have a look at this special well. The water is being pulled up from the bottom by a rope attached to two oxen. This well is in the middle of a sandy desert, and you can see that it must be very deep because the oxen have to walk such a long way to pull the water to the top. The man is putting his weight onto the rope too. The water comes up in a big leather bag. It is poured into a stone channel and it runs along this channel to the town. 
The channel is being marked in on the map in white now. The water flows along into a big stone tank. Here are people of Bikinia at the tank coming to fetch water for their houses. But some people are too lazy to fetch it for themselves, so there are water carriers, like these men who fill leather bags with the water and take it round the streets on camels. But people who buy it from them have to pay for it, having to be brought to their door. This camel evidently bites, for it wears a muzzle. Take another look at Bikaniya on the map. Outside it, to the northeast, is the palace of its ruler, the Maharaja of Bikaniya. His palace is built of red sandstone, which was carried across the desert. Here is a picture of the Maharaja himself. He is an Indian prince and rules his state quite independently. But he has allied his state by treaty to Great Britain and accepts the King of Great Britain as Emperor of India. The people of Bikaneer, like all Indians, enjoy any kind of procession and they gather to see their ruler drive along the streets. It is strange to find so much life and so many people in a town in the middle of the desert. <laughs> 